Hello again everyone. So as I discussed in my previous video on um, uh, set theory, so this is what we did with set theory. We showed that we we showed how to show that two sets are equal. We also talked a bit about, about subsets and what a set is. And I mentioned that the only thing that I hadn't talked about was showing how um, was showing how to prove that A was a subset of C or or showing a subset proof. And so that's what I want to do today or, or wherever you are. Um, that if A is a subset of B, so if A is a subset of B, meaning that A is a subset of B like that, and B is a subset of C, so B is a subset of C, then I want to show that A, A is a subset of C. Okay, so as I'm doing this example, I'm also going to be doing uh, theoretical aspects of, of subset proofs. So the first thing you want to do in a subset proof, first thing you want to do is you want to use an arbitrary element in your subset, in A in this case. So use an arbitrary, arbitrary element in A. Okay. And arbitrary here is just a very fancy word to say that the only thing you know about your element, the only thing you know about your element is that it is contained in A. That's all. That's all you know about your element. Okay. So the first, the first line of your proof should be suppose, suppose X belongs to A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the theory in white and the actual proof in yellow. Okay, so that's my first step. So my first step is I use an arbitrary element in A or whatever subset you're trying to prove that it is an actual subset. Okay, my second step is I need to use, use a given condition, given condition to get to my next to get to my next next superset okay so this isn't very formally written uh, what i'm trying to say here is that if i'm if i'm starting in a if i'm starting in a oh, let's use a different color if i'm starting in a and i want to get to c i want to get to c then i need to use an intermediate an intermediate condition or assumption that's given to me to get to that final superset. Okay, so what that means is I have, suppose that X belongs to A because, because it is given, it is given that A is a subset of B, we can now say that X belongs to B. Okay, by definition. Because by definition, by definition, if A is a subset of B, then whatever is in A is also going to be in B. Okay, so that's that's my second step. So what I've shown, what I've shown is I've shown that my element that's in X, my element that's in A, sorry, is also now in B. So my next step, so my next step is going to use an other Use another, use another condition, condition to get to my next, to get, sorry, there should have been a here, a two here, to get to my next, to my next superset. So in other words, what I mean by that is, well, I've used, I've already used this, right? I've already used this, which was given. So the only thing that's left with is to use this assumption. So how would I how will I use this assumption? Well, the same the same way that I used it in two. So in other words, I say that because because B is a subset of C by assumption by assumption, right? Then X must also belong to C. 
Okay, so that's my third step. And you're probably wondering why exactly I'm doing this and why it matters. Well, it's because A, it's because the, the element that I chose was arbitrary, meaning that arbitrary sort of means that it, it doesn't matter what it was. We on, The only thing we knew about it was that it was an A. So if the only thing you knew about an element was that it was an A and that through through two conditions, you happen to, to, to find out that it was also in a C, then that means that you can generalize. So what you can do is you can now generalize, generalize to a for all statement, a for all statement. And a for all statement is very powerful because it says that anything in something would also happen to the other thing. Well, that's probably not how you're supposed to say it, but in this case, you can use an arbitrary element in A and it'll be in C. So that means that for any element in A, so then your line of proof, your line, uh, your next line of proof will be that. So for all or for any X in A, X is also, X is also in C. And so the last thing you have to notice, so I guess your fifth step is notice the definition, the definition of a subset of C. So the definition of, of a subset is that for any element in A, that same element must be in C. And that's exactly what I've shown in this line. I said, I've said that for all X in A, X is also in C or epsilon C, meaning that, meaning that I can write hence A is a subset of C. And that's it. That's, that's exactly how you would have proven a subset, uh, a subset sort of uh, containment or, well, that's probably not the right term, but a subset proof is done exactly that way. Of course, sometimes it'll be more difficult, but Typically, that's what you do. You you use the conditions that are given to you. So I used A as a subset of B, and then I used B as a subset of C, and I got from X belonging to A to X belonging to C. And the second, because the the most important part is to know how to get how to get these transi transitions. So I don't know how to go from one to two and two to three. And then the second most important part is knowing how this can generalize to A for all. Okay, so that was a proof on a, um, on a subset.